In this recording, we look at an example of using implicit differentiation in a case where the quotient rule is also required. First of all, let's recall what the quotient rule for differentiation is. It says that if we have z as a function of x divided by another function of x, then the derivative of z with respect to x is v times du dx minus u times dv dx divided by v squared. And of course the same thing would apply differentiating with respect to other variables. Like if it was a function of t divided by another function of t, you could work out the derivative of some variable with respect to t using the same general idea, let's say. Another thing that's useful to recall when we're looking at implicit differentiation is that if we differentiate a function of y with respect to x, it's actually the derivative of that function with respect to y times dy dx. So with these two things in mind, let's have a look at an example of using implicit differentiation along with the quotient rule. So let's suppose we want to find dy dx given y squared equals x squared plus y cubed divided by cos y. First of all, implicit differentiation is going to be useful here because we want to find dy dx and there's no obvious way of making y the subject of this expression here. And secondly, the quotient rule is going to be necessary because we can clearly see it's one sort of a function divided by another. So how do we begin? Well, the first step is always to start by differentiating both sides of this equation with respect to x. That is, the derivative with respect to x of y squared will be equal to the derivative with respect to x of x squared plus y cubed divided by cos y. Now, looking at each side of this in turn, derivative with respect to x of y squared, that looks moderately straightforward. The main thing to remember there is that because that's a function of y, we're differentiating with respect to x, it'll be the derivative of y squared with respect to y is 2y, and that will then be multiplied by dy dx. But what's going to be a little more complicated is finding the derivative on the right-hand side here. So let's look at that in more detail. All right, we've said we're wanting to find the derivative with respect to x of x squared plus y cubed divided by cos y. That's all we're looking at on the right-hand side. Once we've done this, we'll put the whole thing together. Here we need to use the quotient rule. So we'll let u equal the expression on the numerator. So that's the x squared plus y cubed. v will be the expression on the denominator, which is cos y. So I've just rewritten those a little bit smaller so that we've got more space. Let's now think then about the derivative of each of those with respect to x. So du dx will become 2x plus 3y squared dy dx. Then dv dx, as with the y cubed, that's differentiating a function of y with respect to x. So the derivative of cos y with respect to y is negative sine y. And that is also multiplied by dy dx. So therefore, the derivative with respect to x of x squared plus y cubed divided by cos y, what's that going to become? Well, we said it was going to be v times du dx, first of all. So that's going to be cos y times 2x plus 3y squared dy dx then that's going to be minus u times the derivative of v with respect to x. So that's going to be minus x squared plus y cubed times negative sine y dy dx. So minus negative sine y, that will become a plus. So that will be then times sine y dy dx. And this is then all divided by v squared. So what is v squared? That's cos y squared. 
So that is the expression for the derivative with respect to x of x squared plus y cubed divided by cos y. That is what we get using the quotient rule. So putting it all back together, finding dy dx of our original expression, y squared equals x squared plus y cubed divided by cos y, we wanted to find the derivative with respect to x of y squared and set that equal to the derivative with respect to x of x squared plus y cubed divided by cos y. So here we've written out what happens when we differentiate both sides of the equation and put that together. So 2y dy dx is equal to all of this. Now what do we do? Well, we're actually wanting to rearrange this to make dy dx a subject. A good place to start would actually be to multiply both sides by cos y all squared. When we're having a look at that, that means we're going to get 2y dy dx times this. And I'm going to just write that in the form cos squared y, which often makes that look a bit simpler. So on the left, we'll now have 2y cos squared y dy dx. And then that will leave us with what we have on the numerator on the right hand side. Expanding out those brackets will actually give us 2x cos y plus 3y squared cos y dy dx plus x squared sine y dy dx just running a bit low on space here, so I'll go on to the next line, plus y cubed sine y dy dx. This is all looking a bit messy, but remember that the main objective is to rearrange to make dy dx a subject. All we actually have to do now is rearrange it so that all terms containing dy dx are on, let's say, the left-hand side. So I'll do this now as we talk about it. That will mean subtracting across some of these terms over here. And then all of that, any terms that do not contain dy dx will be on the right hand side. In this case, in fact, most of our terms do contain dy dx. So that will just leave us with all of this equal to 2x cos y on the right. So you might want to take dy dx out as a common factor and verify that this is what you actually get. And it's then simply a matter of dividing both sides by everything that dy dx is multiplied by. And you should finally then end up with the following expression for dy dx in this example. So it can look a bit messy, but the main thing to remember is how to use the quotient rule, then to rearrange everything to make dy dx a subject. And finally, just to check your working at each stage so that you don't accidentally drop off powers or negative signs or the like.